Welcome to the FanDuel Hurry Up. I'm Arielle Epstein. Joining us today, Ryan Williams. We're going to talk some best ball. It's never too early to talk about the NFL season. Ryan, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, happy to be with you again, Arielle. Um, you know, hopefully these names are a little bit more enticing than the last time we talked of quarterbacks. I know I was going to catch some flack on those guys, but these are going to be some ex exciting late round wide receivers that people can take in best ball leagues that I think will uh, they'll be happy about. Let's start with the wide receiver for the Washington football team, Curtis Samuel. Yes, you heard that right. He just came over from the Carolina Panthers to play for his former head coach and Ron Rivera. Why do you feel Curtis Samuel is going to be a good fit? In yeah, you hit it right on the head there. He's teamed back up with Ron Rivera. Not only Ron Rivera, but he's teamed back up with Scott Turner as well, who came over to follow Ron Rivera over to Washington. And then them bringing in Curtis Samuel this offseason is no surprise. Now, when Scott Turner was there in Carolina, Ron Rivera got fired and he took over those last four games. And we saw Curtis Samuel's usage really explode onto the scene. That's what got people hyped about drafting him in 2020 because of how he was used in those last four games. And he, over those last four games, I think he had, he had 19 uh, rushes total in the season, but nine of those came when Scott Turner took over. So we know he's excited about using him as an explosive weapon. This Washington team is going to be aggressive with Fitzpatrick at the helm. And when you're looking at where the ADP has Curtis Samuel right now at wide receiver 42, it just doesn't make sense. He's explosive. He was number two in wide receiver rush yards in 2019 as well with Scott Turner there. I saw 100 targets in 2019. It's just he, he definitely has... Um, a ceiling to where that can offer you great, great equity where he's going in best balls. And, you know, even, even after all that, he's teaming up with his guy and Terry McLaurin, both of them coming from Ohio state university, the Ohio state university. So, you know, that wide receiver room is going to be fun, going to challenge people. And with the aggressiveness as Ryan with Ryan Fitzpatrick, as I said, I think that Curtis Samuel's in for a big 2021 season. Samuel also coming off his career high with 77 receptions, 851 receiving yards, and as Ryan alluded to before, 200 rushing yards. Another receiver that you're looking at, the Giants wide receiver, Sterling Shepard. Why do you not get concerned about Shepard on a Giants team that just acquired number one wide receiver, Kenny Galladay, from the Lions? Yeah, not just Kenny Galladay, but also the Kadarius Tony, the guy who everybody wants to talk about with the first round draft capital, but not, not too many other people excited about him, except maybe Urban Meyer there in Jacksonville. But I digress. Uh, the Giants, listen, it's not going to be exciting about this team. But the one thing that I like about Sterling Shepard, outside of his egregious price tag, which he's going wide receiver 62 right now, which it just doesn't make sense for a guy of his caliber. I think people forget, or or maybe, maybe I'm trying to cling on to his rookie season where he caught eight touchdowns, but he's definitely been explosive. And then over the past two years, being with Daniel Jones, he's been a guy that Daniel Jones has leaned on to. He's 5.7 receptions in 2019 in Daniel Jones' first year, and last year, 5.5 receptions. So I think what worries people about Sterling Shepard outside of those guys being added into the mix is possibly that injury history too. We haven't seen him play a full 16 in the past two years, but I definitely think that, you know, we're talking about a Giants team that's not going to be very good. They're going to be playing from behind. I think they're going to be still using three wide receiver sets and Sterling Shepard is going to be on the field. Kadarius Tony and Kenny Galladay aren't going to take away from the guy that you should be worried about. in the Giants is, is Darius Slayton who I think is definitely affected uh, by these guys coming in. So he's still going to play outside receiver. Uh, Double-digit targets in the red zone is something that you like as well, too. And then you're looking at the end of schedule when you're talking about what the fantasy playoffs are going to be um, pushed back a week after week four, after week 14 with the team buys. They're very favorable schedule for the New York Giants there. So uh, if you're looking at fantasy playoffs and having a guy, you know, who shouldn't, who should be on the field if he's healthy, the Giants, you know, will still be rolling out their start you don't have to worry about them, you know, benching players for being too good, quote unquote. I think that Sterling Shepard makes a lot of sense to take in late round best ball drafts. Injuries are the biggest concern for Shepard. Only played 12 games last year, still led the Giants in receptions. If he stays healthy, Sterling Shepard is a good best ball play. Final wide receiver, the Atlanta Falcons wide receiver, Russell Gage. How much are you choosing Gage? Because Julio Jones might get traded. 
Yeah, that definitely has factored into it, Ariel. You you caught me. Uh, but listen, even without that, you were looking at Russell Gage, who came onto the scene here, and I really think that he's going to be utilized. The Julio Jones factor, I think, is is definitely the main thing that we have to talk about here, though. With Julio Jones only playing nine games last year, healthy, that is, um, he Russell Gage had an opportunity to kind of step into the fold. And we're looking at a guy who's coming off of a season with 110 targets, 23rd most amongst wide receivers from last year. When you think of Russell Gage, you don't think about a 100 target wide receiver, but here we are. And a lot's been made about this Atlanta Falcons offense. I was talking with you about Matt Ryan being a good best ball target and then targeting a guy like Russell Gage late with him just makes for one of my favorite uh, best ball stacks overall if you're missing out on a guy like Cal Calvin Ridley at his equity. And so when we're looking at the overall scheme, let's talk about Arthur Smith and, and Dave Rangone, the new uh, offensive coordinator who's coming over from Chicago. Now, I think people will point at, at Tennessee and granted the personnel that they had, they only ran three wide receiver sets, 11 personnel, 38% of the time. But Dave Rangone, he comes from the Bears where they ran it 56% of the time. So even if Julio Jones is still in the mix. I still think that we'll see Russell Gage. But regardless, I think Russell Gage is going to be on the field. If Julio leaves, we're talking about a guy coming off of a season with 11.3 fantasy points per game. He's just going to be on the field at all times. And, and that's something that you want to see. And you're looking at last year having more PPR points than guys like Michael Gallup, T.Y. Hilton, Jerry Judy, DJ Chark. That is, that's exciting when you're talking about Russell Gage being the wide receiver 70 currently right now in best ball drafts. So listen, best ball is all about upside. And for me, he offers tremendous upside getting a late round guy that you could potentially be looking at as your wide receiver three in fantasy this year. Uh, granted things shape out in his favor. So definitely go out, get you some Russell Gage and, uh, and thank me later. Gage also led Julio Jones. He had more receiving yards last year than Jones did. Granted, Jones played nine games. Gage played all 16. Career high, 786 receiving yards last year for Russell Gage, just behind the leading wide receiver on the Falcons, Calvin Ridley. Ryan Williams, thank you for those best ball plays at wide receiver. Here at the FanDuel Hurry Up, I'm Ariel Epstein. Thanks for joining us, and good luck to those plays. <laughs>